underneath and getting him. She's going to try to. Carson's going for the escape again. Jocelyn still has control of his legs. She is still in control. No points have been awarded to Carson yet. Jocelyn's got to work now to keep her position. because Carson has not been able to get behind Jocelyn. He's not been awarded those points yet, and he was just awarded those two points for... Jocelyn's now trying to get him in a position where she can score. We have a short time, there's three seconds left on the clock. And that is the end of that period. We'll be going into the third. Um, Jocelyn has choice for a top, bottom, or neutral. It's a good idea for them to always look to their coach for guidance. Um, strategically speaking, Jocelyn can get more points if she starts on bottom and is able to get up and get an escape. Uh, if she starts neutral, she has to do a takedown. So as uh, some people may consider being on bottom a disadvantage, strategically speaking, 
strategically speaking, it, it's better for um, the advantage of scoring for her to be on bottom right now. She's a quick mover, and hopefully she can get the escape. She's got to post those legs and get up and not give Karsten the, the advantage. He's trying to break her down. There she goes, taking practicing rolls in practice. And Karsten is still in control, no points have been awarded. Jocelyn's working really hard to break out of this and get the advantage. the strength and skill it takes to be working at this level with your opponent is incredible. Lots of practice by both of these competitors. Jocelyn's trying to get position. She needs these points. There's less than a minute left in the match. And currently the score is four to one with Franklin County Tech having four. Karsten's trying to work a half. Nelson, Jocelyn's looking away, fighting that. It's a really difficult position to be in. Having a strong defense is incredibly important in the wrestle. And that's the match. Franklin County Tech won that match, which brings the overall team scores to Frontier, we have six thanks to Bear's ability to take that forfeit earlier. And Franklin County Tech currently has, I believe it should be, they have it three. Um, because Jocelyn did not get pinned, we, um, Franklin County Tech did not get the full six points. A lot of rules have changed this year in wrestling, so scoring wise as well. On the mat right now, we have Wyatt. Um, Wyatt is a senior this year. He's been wrestling for a very long time. He's a very skilled wrestler. Great on the mat. He's captain this year. Um, we're at 126, and Max is the competitor for Franklin County Tech. took a shot, Wyatt is sprawling hard to break that grip, and he's going to work it to his advantage. He should be awarded the two points in order to score. And he's trying to pull him back to get some back points here. Wyatt's trying to work to flip Max over. Maneuvering his body to get the best possible leverage. Working really hard. Max is gluing his belly right to the mat. He doesn't want to flip at all, either for the pin or for back point, but there we go. Wyatt's got to squeeze really hard get heavy on those hips to get those shoulders down on Max. And there's the pin. Job well done by Frontier and by Franklin County Tech. Both teams are competing really well tonight. And that was the 126 weight class. One thirty two weight class is next.
I do not believe we have a 132 in our lineup tonight, so Franklin County Tech will be taking the forfeit. That brings the current score for the meet. 12 points for Frontier, 19 points for Franklin County Tech. Our next weight class is 138. For Frontier, we have Zach. Zach is a first year wrestler here at Frontier. He's been doing really well. He's enthusiastic on and off the mat and he's great fun to watch. Um, what he lacks in experience, he definitely has in spirit and willingness to learn. So Frontier has <laughs> not gotten the two points. Franklin County Tech has gotten the two points for that move. Zach is fighting hard on the bottom, out of bounds. They're gonna go back into the middle. All right. Zach's moving right on the whistle, doing everything he should, trying to build his base. And there's the pin for Franklin County Tech. Zach did a great job. The more time these wrestlers get on the mat, especially as a seventh grader, the more experience and know-how he's going to have. Franklin County Tech's um, a high school, so they have ninth through twelfth grade, and um, Frontier is starts at seventh grade, so we have some young, inexperienced wrestlers who are going to make this team pretty amazing in a couple of years. We have 144 on the board right now, and we have Ben for Frontier. Ben is a second year wrestler, he's in eighth grade. A really skilled wrestler, coming a long way. He's eager to get on the mat and really able to follow the coaching instructions and work hard out there. So you can hear the coaches encouraging the athletes on the mat, giving them instruction. It's vital for the athletes to be able to hear the coaches and figure out what to do. There's a lot of strategy involved in wrestling. And Franklin County Tech has the two points. Ben got out, he gets one for the escape. So now it's gonna be back into working to find who's gonna have control of the situation. They're both working hard. Many times what's happening in a match like this is you can see the, the inexperience in our wrestlers, but the desire to learn and to improve, and it's a really great thing to see. As an eighth grader, Ben's doing incredibly well. Ironically enough, Ben is hoping to go to Franklin County Tech next year. So we may be competing against him on the mat then. And the buzzer signifies the end of the first period for this match. Both wrestlers out there working really hard. And Tech is going to take the top position, which puts Ben on the bottom. Gives him an advantage. He can score easily. He's a really strong and agile wrestler, as well as determined. You can see right on the whistle, he's moving, getting up, trying to get those hips away. Working hard to break the grip. And now he's driving in, trying to get Franklin County Tech down. He has yet to be awarded the point because he didn't pop his head up. So that we, they were technically not in neutral yet. 
We're going to start from the bottom again. Oh, the whistle. Ben's got to move, move, move. Break that grip. This time as he gets his hips away, he's got to get, get free. A lot of hard work happening on the mat. You can hear the coaches telling Ben to build his base up, which is where he's at right now. It gives him an easier way to get out of the down position he's in. We should be posting those arms and legs and standing up. There he goes. Now he's got to break the grip and get his hips away so he can get that escape point. He's working really hard to do that. So the ref is calling locked hands. That's an advantage for us. It means that the Ben should be awarded a point. The score is now 2-2. So Tech is going to have a caution again. Um, he had an improper placement of his hand on Ben's elbow. So Ben's got to work really hard right now. There's 30 seconds left in this period. He's got to get those hips away and score some points. Green has got a stalling call on him for Franklin Tech. And there, there Ben goes. Now Ben's got to work really hard to keep the advantage and score some more points. It's 3-2 in Ben's favor right now. He's snapping hard, working hard out there. So again, it's really important for these athletes to look to their coaches strategically speaking, um, to score some points. Ben is gonna choose down. Uh, again, he's a strong and agile wrestler. He should be able to get out of this down position as he had done uh, the last period and score another point. Working hard. And there he goes. Well done, Ben. Score is now four to two with Ben in the lead for this match. With a minute and 35 seconds left on the clock. A lot of time left for both wrestlers to score and possibly pin. So Ben now has a stalling call on him. The goal for the wrestlers is to maintain their position within the center of the ring, the small circle, if you will. Um, and that can sometimes be hard to do with the push and pull that happens in the competition. That's why you can hear the, the coaches yelling, circle, circle. It helps to keep them, one, moving in a circle, and two, inside of the circle. So. Ben just got a stalling call on him. And so, um, Tech was awarded a point. Ben snapped down and used it to his advantage and pinned. Beautiful job by Ben Baker. Well done. Again, Ben is an eighth grader, second year wrestling here at Frontier and was able to score a big win for us tonight. Well, well done. Next on the mat, this is the 150 weight class for Frontier, we have Connor. And for Franklin County Tech, it's Wyatt. 
Connor is also a second year wrestler, eighth grader, strong and skilled wrestler. Excited to see how he develops throughout the season. He's sprawling hard right now. A lot of muscle on the mat right now between the two of them. Um, a lot of movement by both of them. Uh, Wyatt was awarded two points as he's in the advantage position right now. Connor's got to work up and get an escape. Connor's moving well on the mat, using it to his advantage. He is, is technically out of the grip, but he has not gotten an escape yet because um, they are not in neutral yet. And now he gets away at the point. working hard on the mat in order to maintain their position. Um, two points were awarded to Tech, but Connor skillfully avoided the pin at that point. Now he's got to break that grip and avoid this cradle that's trying to get locked up on him by Wyatt. Short time here. And that's the end of the first period. Score so far is four for Franklin County Tech, one for Frontier for Connor. Connor's in the down position, hopefully able to work up to an escape and get that point and then turn it around to his advantage. A lot of movement is necessary for that to happen, and Connor is being very successful right now. He's got to get behind. And there he goes. He gets two for the reversal, not even the escape. Well done, Connor. Score is three to four currently, with Franklin County Tech in it. the lead. Connor's working hard to keep them down. His hips are really high. He almost. Oh, and there he goes. Connor's got to work to belly down. There he is. And he's using it to his advantage. Still in control. Trying to run a power half. He's got to get his hips in a better position to do that. And his work his hand through. He's got to bump him forward, flatten him out. And there's an escape. A lot of hard work happening. Connor's got him down. Short time left, he's got to work really hard. He's either got to get him on his back or he's got to get him. You can hear the crowd really involved in this match. And the pin was called a tenth of a second left. But what a great match had by both athletes. One of the great things about wrestling tech is the camaraderie between athletes on both the teams. Many of the athletes came from Frontier or have siblings that are at Frontier, and so there's a lot of support and enthusiastic cheering had by both teams. Um, small rivalry in there, but overall it's just a good feeling of competition for both teams to be able to work really hard against athletes that they practice with outside of competition on occasion. 
So we gave up a forfeit at that weight at 157. 165 now, we also will be giving up a forfeit. We have a few of our athletes that are out due to illness or injury, but our team is relatively small this year overall. Another forfeit. Our next wrestler um, weighs in at 285, so there's gonna be a bunch of forfeits um, in favor of Franklin County Tech. weight class coming in for us it will be Javian. Javian has a few years under his belt as a wrestler, has really improved in skill and is really developing into a strong force on the team. He's wrestling well and aggressive. head out. There he goes. Sometimes with these upper weight classes, there's a lot of strength and movement involved in the beginning, and then a lot of breaking down the, the opponent to get them into the pin position. There he goes. So Javian goes right down and gets those two points for the advantage, and now he's just going to work and getting his opponent in the pin position, trying to go for a power half. Gave that up, he's working something else now. There he goes, he's got him. Franklin County Tech's working hard on the bottom there, not letting JV in. Get him on his back for those points. Javian's got to break him back down. Javian's got to get off to the side and run that half, power half really hard. You can see the strength and determination by both wrestlers on the mat. He's got him on his back. He should be getting back points minimally. And there is the pen. Well done, Javian. We should be having some JV matches come up. Franklin County has a really large and varied team for weights. Um, so we should hopefully be able to match up a few of the places that we can go, um, our, our weight classes that didn't get a varsity match, which would be wonderful for all of the wrestlers, get a little more mat time, get a little more experience. Because wrestling is an individual sport, being able to wrestle people outside of your own team gives you experience and knowledge that you wouldn't have um, otherwise because you learn your teammates' moves and their strengths and weaknesses rather easily and then being able to wrestle another opponent gives you more knowledge and more experience and that's why starting you know, young as a wrestler really is an advantage because you get to learn how your body moves and how to best use it to defeat your opponents. 
wrestling is a lot about skill and not just strength. Um, it's knowledge, skill, strength, and determination. And Frontier's developing a very young team this year, but it's going to end up being something pretty spectacular in a couple of years. All of these kids have really shown that they're dedicated to the sport. It's not the most popular sport at Frontier, unfortunately. Um, it's probably the most dis difficult sport as you are competing against not only your opponent, but yourself in front of several dozen or hundreds, depending on the um, venue uh, spectators. And so these kids have a lot of courage and a lot of abilities to block things out and just um, get their job on the mat done. It's pretty admirable. The coaches are conferring um, Coach Bagdon and Coach Aiken to figure out what JV matches would be beneficial for both of the teams. JV matches do not count as points towards the win, but they do count for each individual wrestler for experience and know-how. It looks like Jackson may have a JV match. He's getting warmed up on the sidelines. Jackson is also a seventh grader. His first year wrestling here at Frontier. Currently, there is no local youth wrestling program in our area. There is one in Keene, New Hampshire, um, where these Frontier athletes will be traveling on Saturday and Sunday to compete on Saturday, it will be the upperclassmen, and then on Sunday, it will be a youth tournament. So the seventh and eighth graders will go and compete against other athletes their age and weight class, which will be incredibly helpful for them in the long run um, with experience and knowledge. It's not often that they get to do that, and so I know Coach Bagdon tries to provide as many opportunities for the um, middle schoolers to wrestle other middle schoolers so that they can experience, you know, other inexperienced wrestlers. Oddly enough, it, it helps them a lot learn how to properly execute the moves that are basic, like a half Nelson or, you know, um, a cradle. And then they can build up on those skills to the more evolved skills that they will learn as they have more years under their belts. It looks like we're going to have several JV matches, which is exciting. Looks like Jackson's going to be up first. With the changing of the weight classes, it's also um, switched where certain wrestlers are in their weights and things like that. So everybody's kind of learning the new boundaries and rules this year. We're going to see who Jackson's wrestling. wrestler is getting his headgear on, which is pretty much the only safety gear wrestlers wear, is to protect their ears from cauliflower ear. Um, if they have braces, they are required to wear mouth guards um, to avoid injury as well. But other than that, there are no pads or helmets. And here we go. These JV matches are going to start off at a minute for the first period. Jackson's getting in, he's gonna sprawl hard, hopefully. And he's gonna belly out. Hopefully he can build up his base and get an escape.
So that's going to be a potentially dangerous call. Um, Franklin County Tech had a full Nelson on Jackson, which is potentially dangerous, giving Jackson a point. So the score is currently Jackson one, Franklin County Tech two. He's got to keep his head up. And that's the end of the first period. These one minute periods go very, very quickly. So Jackson deferred, which means he'll have choice in third period, which is a strategically smart move. And Tech's trying to get the escape, and he is successful. Now Jackson's got to work to get better position. His stance is low. He needs to keep his hands in front of him, heavy on the head. Two points for the takedown for Franklin County. Jackson's got to lift that head up and break the grip and work on getting an escape. Again, as a seventh grader, Jackson's working really hard, learning a lot in practice and in every match that he wrestles. He's struggling really hard to keep those shoulders up, but he's doing well. And there's the pun for Franklin County Tech. That was a match well fought by Jackson. So on the mat right now, we have Jocelyn. We saw her wrestle earlier. And then we have Mia from Franklin County Tech. These ladies are incredible wrestlers and it's gonna be a great match to watch. So women's wrestling has been on the rise in the area lately, which is wonderful to see. Jocelyn's got her boot down, but hasn't swung behind to get her two points yet. So no points awarded. Mia has Jocelyn's wrist, which is, oh, there she goes. She broke the grip and was able to get at a better advantage there. She goes for her two points, and now she's back in the front trying to run a front headlock. Oh. Mia's got Jocelyn's leg and is hanging on. We'll give her the leverage she needs, and that's the end of the first period. Again, these one-minute periods seem so short to us, but I'm sure they're just as long to the wrestlers on the mat. So Jocelyn's choosing top. She's gonna try to break Mia down and get her into a pin position. Um, but like I was saying, women's wrestling has been taking off at um, the high school level lately, which is a joy to see. And I believe it's the 15th um, Mahar Regional School will be hosting a um, women's wrestling tournament for local high schoolers and not so local, but many teams travel um, who have women on their team. Uh, and Jocelyn will be competing in that, as well as Mia. So we will be able to see them both wrestle there as well. Jocelyn's working hard, keeping Mia down. Working hard on trying to get her back on her belly. Mia's trying to break that and get, get her escape.
Nice work by both athletes right now. Really working hard. Jocelyn's got to get her head out of Mia's grip. She's working hard at that. There she goes. And Mia's going to work for the escape. And she's awarded the point. I'm not sure why we don't have our two points on the board. Um, might be an error by our scorekeeper, but it should be two to one with Jocelyn in the lead for her uh, first period takedown. So that's another two points for us. So it should be four to one, unless I'm mistaken. Jocelyn's got to break me a flat. short time here. They're working really hard. And no points awarded for the escape from Mia. So Mia's on the bottom hoping to get the escape. Austin's going to work really hard to keep her down. A lot of athleticism is happening right now. The struggle to break grips and to position your opponent is incredibly difficult. Jocelyn is still technically in control. Mia has her. They should be out of bounds. Yep. So when both opponents' knees are out of the circle, the larger circle, they're considered out of bounds. Jocelyn's trying to get that half. She's got to get her flat first. She's working hard to keep her down. A lot of coaching going on. I'm not sure if you can see the sidelines, but Franklin Tech has their, most of their team and their coaches lined up against the mat. And you can see a lot of the um, Jocelyn's teammates are also cheering her on. And she's got locked hands, which is going to give you know, a point. So according to our scoreboard, it's tied 2-2. Two to two. There's 8.4 seconds left. If Mia gets the escape, according to the scoreboard, she will win. So we're going into overtime, and it will be first point scored. Um, we'll win the match. So whoever gets the takedown and is able to get into the um, scoring position will win the match.
Both the athletes are incredibly tired. Jocelyn has already wrestled tonight. He is working extra hard out there. Lots of spectators in the stands. They have to be cautious and aggressive at the same time because they don't want to be too aggressive and lose the advantage. And they can't be too cautious and called for stalling. So it's a fine balance of who is going to make the first move and who's going to capitalize on it. And that's the end of the period. We now go down to 30 seconds. So Jocelyn has choice right now. Jocelyn made the strategic choice, the smart choice of going down. She's quick and agile. Hopefully on the whistle, she can execute her escape. 30 seconds is not a long time. We're already 15 seconds in. If Mia gets on her on her back and gets back points, the match is over. If Jocelyn gets an escape, the match is over. But there's three seconds left, and it's a nail biter. And Mia's coaches are telling her to take the strategic bottom place again to get the escape and score. Jocelyn's job is to prevent that from happening and to possibly get some back points. Again, first point win. So if Mia gets her hips away and they get into the neutral, you can see the look of determination and will to win this match on both of the athletes' faces. And that's the end of the sixth period. So Jocelyn's looking to Coach Bagden. He's telling her to think smart and to make her choice. Um, she chose top. She's breaking her down, trying to flip her to get those points. Again, 30 seconds is not a long time to get and execute the moves needed to get back points. It's very difficult to do, and Jocelyn is working really hard. something away with the win. What an incredible match and what an incredible display of athleticism, grit and determination by both of those women. Um, again, women's wrestling is starting to take off locally and it's pretty incredible to have such amazing athletes on both teams and the ability for them to compete tonight was incredible. And now we have Zach back on the mat with a tech kid. Remember, Zach is a seventh grader his first year. He's learning a lot. You can see Zach is 
on the bottom, but he's working hard to arch and to bridge and to <laughs> avoid the pin. <laughs> it can be really frustrating for the athletes who have less experience than their competitors um, to lose, but again, he doesn't lose. He learns, as they say, and he came off the mat with extra experience and more knowledge than he went on the mat with. Javian's going to be competing again. And Javian had won his first heavyweight match. You can hear them saying, circle, circle. One, circle your bodies to stay in the center of the mat, and two, stay in the center of the mat in the circle. Javian's working hard with that leg going to go for the trip, and he's got his two points. Again, upper weights tend to do most of their wrestling on the mat, as opposed to standing. Um, Coach Bagden is instructing Javian to um, roll the wrists. Trying to get that wrist control so he can run a half and get him on his back. With five seconds left, it's going to be tough. But JV needs to work it and get some of those back points, which he did not. Again, 30 seconds is so fast. I mean, a minute is so fast for us. JV and chose down. Hoping to see some big explosive moves on his part. There he goes. Nice reversal on his part. Javian's working hard up there. He's got the power half move going. He's got to get his hips on the right side. Franklin County Tech's working hard to prevent this cradle that Javian's trying to lock up. Working on breaking Javian's grip and just not allowing him to get it in a position so he can get up. There he goes, good work. Um, Javian's working hard, he's gonna keep him down. He's got that leg again and we're in neutral. One point for Franklin Tech. Javian may be trying to work in a bear hug and they're out of bounds. A lot of times these JV matches are used to, um, for real life use against an opponent of the moves that they use in practice. Javian used that move right there to capitalize and got his two points for the takedown. What he does now is gonna depend on his position and what his coaches are telling him. Franklin County Tech is working really hard to prevent the power half. Javian's got it locked up. He's got him on his back. And there's the pin. Great work by both athletes. Next on the mat for Frontier, this is Connor. We saw Connor earlier. Again, he's an eighth grader. He's learning so much on and off the mat in practices. Let's see what he does here. He's got a good shot there. He's got to hang on to that leg. He's let it go. Connor's strength is definitely an advantage for him. He's got two points awarded for the takedown. And he's turning red with a bloody nose. <laughs> so the trainer will clean him up.
bloody noses are a frequent occurrence in wrestling. Oftentimes, um, the wrestlers will get inadvertently knocked in the nose with a knee or an elbow or a shoulder and just bloody noses happen. Um, the trainer is cleaning both of the athletes up, making sure that there's no blood on them, making sure that they're safe. Um, and if need be, the coaches, looks like Coach Matson is over there taking care of the bloody nose for Connor. Looks like um, he might have put a nose plug in it for him. It's hard to see from, yep, and he's got a nose plug. Nose plugs are a wonderful tool for wrestlers. Um, they're placed in the nostril and they won't absorb the blood that's happening and to provide pressure to stop the bleeding. They have to make sure that the mat is completely cleaned of blood um, for health and hygiene reasons, obviously. Uh, and also, just nobody likes blood all over the mat. They're going to make sure that Connor is also cleaned up and that the Franklin County Tech athlete is cleaned up. Connor's on top, gonna break the front click, have a kick down. The Franklin County athlete is trying to get up and get his escape and Connor is returning him to the mat time and time again. And Franklin County Tech is able to go neutral for a point. Current score is two to one with Connor from Frontier in the lead. And that's the end of the first period. Connor's in the down position on the whistle. He's gonna work to get up and get his escape. There he goes. Very nicely executed. He's got the wrist control underneath the belly. He's gonna try to lock it up. Breaking him flat. Trying to. Again, Connor's returning the Franklin County athlete to the mat time and time again as he's working to break him down, get him on his back, and execute either a pin or at least get some back points going. Connor's in the lead currently four to one. Connor's running the power half. You can see he's trying his best to flip his opponent. Franklin Tech is working really hard to prevent that from happening. And that's the end of the second period. Both athletes out there are tired, but working really hard to maintain their drive to win. And we're gonna go neutral for the third period. Connor took the shot, it's a double. He's trying to grab that leg and There he goes, he's got his go behind for his two points. Now he's got a break. Franklin County down. 
And another return to the mat. Using his legs, trying to make him break down. Connor's working hard. You can hear his coaches giving him instructions. Riding legs is a really difficult thing to do. You can hear Tex coaches also giving their wrestler instructions on how to break out of this. A lot of times um, the coaches are trying to be heard over the spectators. Um, and it's sometimes difficult for the wrestlers to hear their coaches' instructions. Connor's running. Executed beautifully, and there's the pin. Again, these matches are between five and six minutes long for, on average. Um, and the athleticism required by both athletes is incredible to be out there for that long. Competing as an individual is incredibly difficult. Okay. Wyatt's back out on the mat. Again, Wyatt is a senior. He's returning. He's been wrestling for several years. And the Franklin County Tech person he's wrestling had a um, five because we did not have anybody in his weight class. Wyatt's sprawling really hard. Franklin Tech gets the two for the takedown. I was waiting for it. Um, Wyatt's trying to belly out so he can work his way up and get that escape or a reversal. There he goes, he's powering his way out. He's got the leg, he's back. This is where Wyatt's experience and skill is obvious. Um, He's been wrestling so long and he comes from a wrestling family that you can tell he knows um, how to get out of positions that many wrestlers do not. And you can also see how he's constantly moving, trying to work his body in a position to get out of this bottom. And that's the end of the first period. They're going to go neutral. Wyatt's got him in a position. He's trying to break the Franklin County Tech athlete down. Maybe spin behind and get his two. Both athletes are working really hard right now. Wyatt was awarded his two points for his takedown. And again, there's that athleticism that you only see in wrestling with Wyatt's hop over. He's got him in a cradle. Franklin County is bridging really hard, trying to break Wyatt's grasp taking everything he can to get out of that pin, and yet Wyatt stuck it. Well done, Wyatt. And that appears to be the end of our wrestling tonight. Thank you for joining us with Frontier versus Franklin County Tech and the Good Now Gymnasium at Frontier. Have a great evening.